Okay, go straight. I'll tell you when to cut it. Go straight. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome, So our study examined a climate intervention technique called stratospheric aerosol injection, which is an idea to cool down the planet by adding a layer of small reflective particles or aerosols into the high atmosphere. Um, those particles would reflect a small amount, perhaps 1% of the incoming sunlight. And there was good evidence that this could be used to cool down the planet um, and perhaps to reduce some climate impacts on vulnerable, pe vulnerable people around the world. What we were interested in is understanding the trade-off between the, the difficulty, the logistical challenge of doing this, and the climate impacts on the ground. Um, so in particular, we wanted to understand how, if you could get to different altitudes in the sky, how the level of impact on the ground would vary depending on how high we could go. Um, in general, it's harder to do this at higher altitude. Um, so our kind of central finding was that if we were limited to using existing large aircraft and, and therefore limited to altitudes of up to around 13 kilometers, we find that there were still meaningful climate impacts. We could still call the planet um, meaningfully with, with plausible injection magnitudes uh, of aerosols. We are imagining releasing sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, um, which would react with water vapor and oxidize into um, sulfuric acid, which then dissociates. And part of that sulfuric acid is the sulfate aerosol, which is this kind of small liquid droplet. Um, and they tend to produce a size distribution in the stratosphere, which uh, makes them good reflectors of sunlight. Um, those sulfate aerosols then kind of slowly sediment downwards through the stratosphere. Um, and ultimately, once they re-enter the troposphere, the, the part of the atmosphere we live in, most of them rain out. So they come out in, in water uh, as acid rain, essentially. In our case, if you were using existing aircraft, then there would still be a modification program required. You'd need some way to vent the sulfur dioxide and to carry it safely. And it's a toxic gas, right? If, if you release this at ground level, it could be quite harmful. Um, so there are definitely big engineering challenges, but 
they would be less intensive than the higher altitude deployments. carbon dioxide will continue to affect the climate and give us warming for thousands of years. But the stratospheric aerosols fall out in a matter of a year or so. And so if you if you get into a situation where you rely on it, where you rely on stratospheric aerosol injection, you're really locking humanity into doing it without fail for, for centuries at least. Uh, and that's a very perilous situation to be in. And if you do it at a time when we haven't yet reached net zero, then you have to do more of it each and every year. And if you ever stop, you get hit in the face with you know, massive catastrophic warming very quickly. Among other things, the uh, when you when you deploy stratospheric aerosol in injection, you, you can change atmospheric circulation patterns, and so this can do things like like disrupt uh, precipitation patterns, cause droughts in some places, uh, cause excessive flooding in other places. Mm -hmm. 